Now this theme tune is probably one of the most recognisable in the world, as is this image down the barrel of a gun. We're talking James Bond, of course, and the latest film is in production right now. Fans will know that the films are famous for their exotic locations around the world. But did you know that a very special Bond film, which is now half a century old, used locations like the Newport Transporter Bridge and Tradiga House? It was made by two schoolboys, and now the second shot kills, as it's called, has been restored and has had a special screening. Our man Hamish Auskerry has been on a mission to see it. Guns, Bond. Guns. They're filtering into the UK from South America. And above all, find the girl. It's a Bond film made in Wales you'll never have seen before. Two 15-year-olds armed only with a camera and an idea. And instead of A-listers, fellow students to play the starring roles. What they did have were some spectacular locations, like the Transporter Bridge in Newport. Now, after nearly 50 years, the pair of directors, including Keith, who also played Bond, are back on the bridge for the first time since filming. Most films would pay an absolute fortune to build sets like this. This was readily available, and the height and the feeling of cold steel was the perfect, perfect choice. Well, my mother said, well, what are you doing today? And she, I said, well, we're filming at the docks. Well, be good, don't get into trouble, and uh, uh, don't upset anyone. And I had no idea that we were up here. Little did she know that you were James Bond. Uh, well, <laughs> yeah, that's nice, she did say. <laughs> James Bond, rest of the British military intelligence. Well, we had to have an original story. An American agent, played by Gail Healy, uh, is missing. You must be James Bond. Bond is, is sent in to discover what, what happened to her uh, and uncovers a, a, an inter international plot to smuggle uh, firearms into, into the United Kingdom. I don't think you'd like him. A brief telephone call with legendary Bond producer Cubby Broccoli had given them their licence to film, but they did not have the Hollywood budget. The film came out a year before Live and Let Die, with Roger Moore and a $7 million budget. The students spent less than £200 on theirs. How about dinner tonight? I thought you'd never ask. Very often, uh, we had to shoot the scene again, didn't we? If that's it, right. If it, yeah, if it was underexposed, yeah. uh, overexposed, or well, the acting wasn't right. <laughs> so we wouldn't know for about three weeks what, what, what our, our scene looked like. But filming on the bridge was free, and at that time, there was very little in the way of health and safety getting in their way. It's a dramatic and fitting place for a Bond film finale, and the bridge is now pretty much as it was then, quite exposed. And these were 15-year-olds with no training, certainly no stunt doubles. And so the scenes they shot up here seemed dangerous, daring and on the edge because, well, they were. That their film survived all these years, let alone the actors during some of the perilous filming up here, is a testament, surely, to a cinematic mission accomplished. Al Skerry, Hamish Al Skerry, ITV News. <laughs> it looks really good, doesn't it? I tell you what, anyone who could survive running along that transporter bridge gets a vote in yeah. my book. It's horrific, absolutely yeah. horrific up there. I feel so. like I want a white cat sitting here in my <laughs> swivel chair. Um, <laughs>